What's up, dude? If you've been looking for another comfort food recipe, chicken paprikash should be high up on your list. It's visually stunning and absolutely freaking delicious. And as always, there is no time to waste. Now let's go! If you want for this dish, you can just buy chicken legs. I'm gonna start with a whole chicken, break it down, and then we'll actually use the carcass to make the stock for this dish, which I'll show you here in a minute. Anybody can break down chicken. You just need a sharp boning knife. I also like to use this slicer type of knife. The chicken is really cold. I just threw it in the freezer for 20 minutes. A cold chicken is a lot easier to work with. One of these little microfiber towels can also be really helpful so things don't get too slippery. And we are gonna start by taking off these little wing tips right here, save those. The next thing we need to do is remove the wishbone because it gets in the way of slicing out the breast and that is right in here. And so we'll just peel back this skin a little bit and you can just feel with your fingers in here that bone is right in there. So what we're gonna do is take our little boning knife here and just slice along this bone on either side and just begin kind of scraping down here just to free up this little wishbone. And I'm gonna cut around the top here and around right there. You just get your finger in there and just keep scraping it like so until it's loose enough where we can pull it out. Should be pretty good now. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. And my friends, you can see right there the wishbone and we're just gonna sort of jiggle it out here. There it is, completely removed. You'll see why we did that in a second. The next thing I'm gonna do is take off the legs. I'm gonna put the chicken on its side here and just make a slice right like this. Whenever you're working with a whole chicken like this, it's really easy just to crack the joints. Boom, right there, you heard that? And then you can see exactly where you need to cut now, which is it's super helpful when you're breaking down a chicken. Other side, and again, we'll just slice in there all the way through, bam, crack it, and you see it right there is the joint, you just slide through. The next thing I'm gonna do is pop off the wings before the breasts. I'll make a slice right here, and this is the same deal as the legs. You can crack, you see right there, it just popped out, and then we'll slice through right here to get out that whole wing, flip it over, same exact deal on this side, slice in here, pop, that one was already kind of broken, easy. Set this bird flat again. And what I like to do here, give it that little CPR crack. And you wanna do that so it's not flopping around on you when you do this last part. So I'm gonna feel where that bone is right now with my finger, and I'm just gonna slice down on one side of it, all the way down like so. I'm just being careful, I'm trying to get as close as I can to the actual bone so I don't waste a lot of meat. And I'm just slicing it out like this, right there. Boom, cut this here. And there you have one beautiful breast out of the chicken. I did a pretty good job with that. Not a lot of meat left over. We'll go ahead and do the other side now. Slicing down, and because this chicken is really cold, this is just going really nicely. Out we go, boom. Another breast out. If you wanna just use store-bought chicken stock and skip this next part, you can, but there is a real beauty in using the whole bird to make a dish. So what I'm gonna do is just, with my hands, just break this thing up like some kind of savage. Easy enough to do. I'm just getting it into smaller pieces. This way we'll get more browning in the end. There we are. And also my chicken came with these little giblets. What I love to put in to make the stock is the whole neck and spine that came out of the chicken. And my wife is from Kazakhstan. This is her favorite little pieces right here. This is like a little heart and a little gizzard. I always save these for her to eat. I'll just throw all my scraps into a pot here as well as these wing tips and little wishbone. Why not? Chicken paprikash. Hit this with a little bit of oil and I'll just season it up a little bit with rosemary salt. I'll put a link to that recipe in the corner right now if you want to learn how to make it. And there we go. Nice heavy little dusting right here. I'll toss it up. I'm also going to throw in some carrot and just one whole onion that I have. Celery can f off. Toss it up again with the oil. All you need to do now is roast that in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30, 40 minutes until it gets nice and golden brown. Then just top it off with water and simmer it on the stove top for at least an hour. And it could go for up to two and a half to three hours if you really want to do a full extraction. And now you have homemade chicken stock. Just keep it in the fridge and use it for whatever you want. Back to our chicken here. These are obviously pieces that are kind of way too big for this dish. All I'm going to do is slice the breast in half, just separating those legs. Joint is right there, that one was easy. And the wings, I'm actually gonna leave whole. I like this kind of big piece right here. So there we have two, four, six, eight, 10 pieces of chicken ready for cooking. If you're gonna make this dish, you really need the right paprika. Paprika, I never know what to say. Your first choice is gonna be Hungarian sweet paprika, the one I have right here. You don't wanna be using smoky Spanish paprika for this. I'll start with a little bit of oil and some of our paprika here. There's a lot more going in this dish later. This is just to marinate the chicken. This is my own little twist on chicken paprikash. And of course, a little bit of salt. I use my little leg here like a utensil. Wow, look at that beautiful color. Then we'll just drop in all our 10 pieces of chicken and we just give it a really nice mix. Now I'm gonna cover this and I'm gonna leave it in the fridge to marinate just until that chicken stock is done, so an hour and a half, two hours. There we are. The vegetables for this dish are really simple. You just need some red bell pepper and one yellow onion. And with bell peppers, I always like to start from the top down like this, just work my way around this whole pepper. And then you wanna get out these little white membrane thing right here. And from there, tip of the knife down, 
and I'll just pull through and we're gonna do about a medium dice for these peppers and we just blast it out. Onion, same deal, I just halved and peeled it. Do a little medium dice straight through there. Just do one through the middle as this onion's pretty small and happy days. All right, my friends, it is now time to cook. Setting down a large saute pan right here. This is gonna be for the chicken. Starting with clarified butter. You'll see lard used a lot in this recipe. Use whatever you got, you know what I mean? I have this clarified butter left over, so I'm gonna use it. Once that oil is nice and smoky, I'm gonna carefully lay in all my chicken. Obviously that pan is a little bit crowded right now, but it's okay, because this chicken's gonna shrink a lot coming up in a second. The heat's around medium high. We're just trying to brown up that skin nicely. After five, six minutes, we're gonna go ahead and give these a flip. Got that nice, beautiful, deep, rich, kind of golden brown, dark brown color. It smells pretty fantastic in this house right now. I'll tell you what. Away we go. And I'll just cook them for another five minutes on this side as well. And finally, I have a little bit more room since they shrank. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw my wings in here. A Little bit crowded, but hey, it's the biggest pan I have. So we're working with it. At this point, we're gonna remove all the chicken from the pan. Wow, look at the color of that beautiful butter, which is now mixed with the fat. I'm turning the heat down a little bit now to medium, maybe even medium low. And we're going in with our yellow onion and our bell pepper. Give that a nice little mix in. At this point, I'll hit it with salt. You know what? And Master Sergeant, whoa, Gilbert, Gilbert. I'm falling so <laughs> He's fine, he's fine. Marcus, I need your help, bro. Right. Just don't use your hips, for God's I sake. No hips involved. Good God, man, give me everything you got. You can't keep saying that. After six or seven minutes, our onions are nice and translucent and softened, as well as the bell pepper. At this point, I'm adding tomato paste. I just happen to love tomato paste. I think it works really well in here. You could use just diced fresh tomato if you want, but it's winter time and I'm not gonna find any good tomatoes, so this will work. In it goes. And whenever you're working with tomato paste, it's nice to cook it off for another four or five minutes in all this fat and oil, and it's really gonna deepen in flavor a lot and also remove any kind of tartness that was in it. Hungarian paprika going in. Woo, give that a good mix. And we wanna be careful we don't burn the paprika. So a quick toasting just for about a minute. And for me, I like to add a little bit of flour. If you want it to be more soupy and kind of watery, you can leave the flour out. I want it to be a little bit thicker, almost like a loose gravy, so I'm adding a little bit of flour. Not a lot, just one tablespoon going in. And so we have a really light roux now going in the pan. We'll cook off the flour for a minute or two, keeping that heat low, being careful not to burn anything. Now we start adding our homemade chicken stock from that carcass, little by little. Once that's all worked in and it's thickened up, add a little bit more. I'm just adding a cup at a time until it's all worked in. All my chicken stock is in and as much as I want to leave it in this pan, it's just not quite big enough. <laughs> if I put all the chicken in there right now, it's going to overflow, so we're going to use a new pan. This should suffice. And in it goes. I'm blown away over the color of this. It just looks absolutely insane. We're gonna put our chicken in skin side up so that skin is still poking out. How exciting is this, huh? You can simmer this on the stove if you want over low heat for 45 minutes to an hour, but I'm just gonna throw it in a 350 degree oven for about one hour. And in it goes. While the chicken finishes cooking in the oven, we need to make the Hungarian noodles that go with this dish. It's a really simple recipe to pull off. Almost like the Hungarian version of spetzle, spetzel, spetzle, which is a homemade German noodle, starting with four whole eggs into a bowl. Go ahead and pop the yolk and give those a mix before adding in your sour cream and salt. Whisk again until it's nice and smooth. And finally, we start adding in our all-purpose flour while constantly whisking. We don't want this to get too thick. The noodles are gonna be a lot nicer if it's almost like a thick pancake batter kind of thing. Wow. To make these noodles really easy, we're gonna be using a piping bag instead of spoons because that can honestly just be a bit of a hassle and take too long. Batter going in, putting your piping bag in something cylinder shaped like this just makes it so much easier if you're doing this alone. There's a lot of ways to do this. You could use a rubber band. I usually just go like this which is one way to do it. And I'm putting a double knot on the top. And there's our little bag of noodle dough ready for the water. First, bring some water to a rolling boil. Depending on how big you want your dumplings, you can cut this smaller or bigger. I'm gonna do something about medium size right about there. Looks good to me. And when the water is boiling, we're gonna pipe it out and just scrape it off with a knife like this. We don't want to overcrowd it too much, so I'm only going to do about half my bag right now. As you can see, the piping bag method works really, really well, and it's so, so quick. Doing this with two spoons is going to make sure that they're definitely not all done at the same time, which is also weird. So just seven or eight minutes of poaching them in the water, then just go ahead and strain them off. Get them out into a bowl and just hook them up with a little bit of unsalted butter as well as a nice little pinch of salt. And the heat from the noodles will absolutely just melt the butter. And that's all she wrote. These noodles are as simple as that. Let's taste one of these things. I love these kind of rustic, Moorish, easy to make things. Mmm. It's so much better than you think it would be. Wow. 
Oh, oh, the seagull. Oh, no. I'm going to get my camera in Marcus to try one of these because I think it's just, it's just kind of crazy how good these are. Not good. Comforting. Comforting, right, exactly. And here is our chicken paprikash. After being in the oven for one hour, I just let it rest for about 20 minutes in the liquid that it cooked in. As you can see, the color is just absolutely ridiculously stunning. It just catches your eye. It's more visually appealing than a lot of other chicken dishes, I would say. I mean, look at it, Jesus. It's so red, it's so, so red. The only thing I noticed about mine is there's quite a lot of fat that came to the surface. As you may know, I love fat, but I don't want that much. So I'm gonna just use a little spoon here and just skim some of this off the top, just so it's not too greasy. No problem. All that's left to do is serve this up with the noodles. I am so excited to give this thing a taste. Oh my God! Mm. Ooh. To plate this up, just start with a little bit of your noodles here. Some of our wonderful chicken down here. Nice big dollop of sour cream in the middle there. You guys thought I forgot. Some people out there thought I forgot. No way. A leg right over there, kind of over the sour cream. Woohoo! Now we simply just douse it with some more of our sauce over the noodles and around the chicken, just like this. Oh my God. This is beautiful. This is just beautiful. I love this kind of food. I really, really do. Woo! Here we go, my friends. Wow. Let's first try a noodle with a little sour cream, a little sauce. That is awesome. Oh man. Coming in for some of the thigh, a little sour cream, sauce it up, a little noodle too. <gasps> Marcus? Mm. It's always so cool that through making these dishes from other countries, you can really connect to a whole culture of people. For a lot of Hungarians, I'm sure when they eat this dish, it reminds them of their grandmother, it reminds them of just comforting times, family. Marcus, you gotta try it, man. Get in there, go for it. That looks good. There we go. There you go. Nice. Mm. Quite nice. Paprika. Until next time, you know I love you in a mouth.